Uh, next thing to look at are constants and pointers. So we're going to see constants, iota, memory addresses, and pointers. So uh, constants, you declare a constant, just constant p string is equal to death and taxes, right? So there we go. And then printing out each of those. And I could also declare it right in the function, but I don't use the colon equals for that. So just make a note of that. And, uh, and then there's also this concept of an iota. And so here's an iota in action, constant ABC iota will print out 0, 1, 2. And so it's a constant that increments. Kind of interesting. What's the use of that? And you can also write it like this, and then it just knows, hey, that's all the same. They're also going to be iotas. So that's the way you could also write it. And you could, uh, if it comes across constant again, iota, so if it comes across this, it resets it. And so when I print those out, it resets it. And if I was to uh, mix up uh, these, right, it would get a little bit wacky, but... So if you read about IOTA, it says within a constant declaration, the pre-declared identifier IOTA represents successive untyped integer constants. So basically what we just saw, it is reset to zero whenever the reserved word constant appears in the source and, and increments after each constant spec. It can be used uh, to construct a set of related constants. And so what is a constant spec? If we go look at the BNF for under the language spec, you know, here's a constant spec. And we can see a constant spec is an identifier list, uh, you know, and then an identifier list is an identifier. And so, you know, you can dig into that just to see how the documentation does it all. But here, here's a use of a constant where we're throwing away the zero, and then we're taking iota and we're multiplying it by 10. So when I print B and C, I'm going to get 10 and 20. No big deal. But then we could take that same thing and we could throw away iota, and this is an example from the documentation. We throw away the first one, and then we have again 10 and 20, but then we're going to bit shift one to the left, and, uh, and that will allow us to do kilobytes and megabytes, and you can keep going up the line with that, right? So if you wanted a you know, nifty, clever way to sort of you know, reference kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, yottabytes, uh, the documentation has an example. It shows you that, and if you print that out, you could actually see the binary, you know, and you could see the decimal representation of how many uh, bits, bytes, bytes are there. So you can learn more about bitwise operations if you want. You don't really use them much. Uh, and this is from Caleb in uh, GoLang Web Programming. Uh, you know, so not really necessary. Bitwise operations is supposed to be used for OS and compilers anyway, so you don't really use them in most languages at all. Use them most in them. It's a nice way to signal to people that you know something. <laughs> uh, so a couple exercises to work with that. And next thing is just like looking at memory addresses and getting memory addresses. And I like this question, and where do you live? And where do you live? Because you get a memory address with and, and where do you live? So if you want to see where a variable is living, you just put in the ampersand. So here's an example of that. I have a variable a. And A's memory address is ampersand A. And so I print that out. And there's the memory address. Can you guys see this? You want me to make it bigger? Better, right? And so you got an exercise to do that. And then how do we use the memory address? And so here I am uh, asking the user to enter some information. And I've declared a variable, which uh, is a float64. And I'm saying, hey, at that memory address, uh, dump in the results of what you get from the user from from the user input, right? With format scan, we want to take whatever the person enters and put it into that memory location. So that's one way you could use memory addresses. And it's kind of interesting to go look at the documentation for format scan and see, oh, you know, what is it? How does the documentation say that I put a memory address in there? It's not all that clear, actually. Uh, go doc. That one wasn't totally clear to me. What's that? Find scan. Scan, scan, scanning, scanning, scanning. <coughs> scan. Uh, so it just says here that it takes a variable number of parameters. 
and uh, or it's declared with a variable number of parameters, takes a variable number of arguments, and, and that those are of any type. That's what that means, interface or of any type. So it reads from standard input, storing success, successive space separated values into successive arguments. So it doesn't really say there, hey, stick in a memory address, but that's uh, one of the ways in which you can use it. Oh, hey, right there. I didn't even have to look it up. Um, so it's kind of uh, also, I think, just like looking at the docs, right? We have uh, a couple of different things in the format package here. We have print, we have scan, we have sprint. How many people are familiar with sprint and what sprint does? Raise your hand. Uh, and then how many people know the difference between print line versus print? All right, cool. So print is just going to print and it won't give a return. Print line gives a return. Print F prints with uh, formatting verbs. And so you could specify formatting verbs, and we'll see that in a second. And we have, you know, no whatever, uh, what's not a prefix, but it's a postfix. What's a postfix? What is it? Suffix, thank you. We have no suffix on one, and then we have the suffix F on one, and we have the suffix F line on the other. None, suffix F, suffix line, none, suffix F, suffix line. And... Um, and so once you understand that, oh, okay, this gives me a new line, and this no line, and F is for formatting verbs, you kind of got all three different ways. And print is for printing, scan is for receiving input from, you know, the command line, and, uh, and sprint is to string print. So I could print something to a string variable, and maybe I want to use that, right? So I might use sprint F to format some stuff and print it to another string variable, and then I could do something with that string variable. So that's string print is that. And then we have file print up here with takes an IO writer. And we'll see that in an exercise that I was working on this morning from day three. By the way, how many people watch Caleb's day one and day two videos? Let me see your hands. Put them up. Let me see them. Day one and day two. Put them up. You watched them. What? That's it? What are you, shy? There's like two hands? Put them up. This is what I don't wear deodorant. So if I can do this, you guys can do it. <laughs> I don't. I'm like the European style. Deodorant's like an alien conspiracy to get aluminum in your brain and make you get it's Alzheimer's. Like <laughs> you know, you watch the videos? Uh, some of them. There's so much of them. <laughs> you guys need to suck it up. <laughs> I'm serious. That's one of your assignments. Watch those videos. I want to see us do some cool stuff, and I need you guys to get into it. I know we said it last semester, but most of us can't just drop all our other courses either. We I'm not asking you to drop your other courses. I'm, I'm just saying, do it now before you have kids. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was up till 3 last night. And it's like, okay, get up at 8, right? Ready to go. And, you know, family goes to bed, and it's like, all right, time to work. And, you know, I don't know. Join me if you can. Uh, so uh, here's an exercise. For, you know, you'll do that one. And then uh, pointers. So a pointer points to a memory address, right? We know this. And I, I think it's cool just to reflect on symbolism. And, and well, read it. Right? So the asterisk symbol and symbolism is used to reference something more. And so that's kind of what, oh, that's what a pointer's doing. It's referencing something more. Right? It's pointing to something. Just like that in a book would be pointing to something. Like, oh, look down below and see what it's pointing to. So I think it's kind of cool how they pick stuff. And, uh, and, and then you don't have to, like, memorize it. You're just like, oh, that makes sense. So this is how we store or reference a memory address, right? So I have variable A, and I can print out A, and I can print out the memory address. And I can say, hey, that memory address, I'm going to create a new variable B, and it's pointing to that memory address. And what is the type of B? It's a pointer to an int, because at that memory address, an int is stored. And so, uh, so this is invalid code. What did I do here? We're saying on line 15 that C is of type int, but then we're assigning it a memory address, not an int, right? So C is of type int, and we, it's actually a pointer to an int, right? So that's not valid. So this is a dereference. So we could reference something, right? Like, hey, I'm referencing this address. And we could also dereference it. So A is 43. Get the memory address. And now I'm referencing the memory address. B is referencing it. I could print out that memory address because that's what B is storing. 
And I could dereference it and say, hey, show me the value in that location. How many people, like, you're totally cool with this? Cool. How many people, this is like, ooh, what? Huh? Nobody? Cool. Uh, so, you know, here's that stuff just actually printing out, I think. So A is 43, and then, you know, print the value, print the memory address, and then create a B that's pointing to it, and then print the memory address and dereference it. And uh, star B, whoa, star B, so that's like the value at that memory address is now equal to 42, and then we print A and we print 42. So we said, hey, this memory address, the value that's there, because B is like the memory address, and so let's dereference that and say the value there, let's set it equal to 42. And so this allows us to pass around memory addresses instead of a bunch of data. So we had a, a boatload of data, right, just like all this data stored we, instead of passing all that data around and hindering the performance of our application, we could just say, hey, all the data at that memory address. So we could just pass the memory address around, and then we could even change what's, uh, what's at that memory address. And so you can read that there. Kind of cool. So uh, exercise do that. So we learned about IOTA and memory addresses and pointers and referencing and dereferencing. And you got some review questions to do. Any questions?